The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Uh, welcome to the March 28th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Phone lines are open. You can also email me, steve at tfnn.com. Send those emails early. And in the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, that'd be great. And, of course, in our Tigers Dental, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. Again, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got a mixed bag out here. you got the Dow, the S&P. Well, everything's trading lower with the exception of the NASDAQ 100, 36 points to the upside. The NASDAQ Composite, 12 points to the upside. And, of course, the spot politics is up 86 pennies, but still below its 50-day exponential moving average. Dow's off about 200 points, about 6 tenths of a percent. The S&P, 11 points or 2 tenths. Russell's off 1 percent or 20 points. Semi's off 1 and a half percent, 53 points out there. Tranny's down a quarter of a percent or 42 points. Gold is off 15 bucks. That's 3 tenths. Are three quarters of a percent. Silver's down one and a half percent or 37 cents. 25.24 is its print. Uh, Light sweet crude trade out at 107.22. That's after a breather, taking a six dollar relief. And uh, natural gas is off uh, six pennies. She's trading at 5.54. Lead the charge dollar wise. The upside you've got uh, Tesla 78 bucks. Amazon 33. Micro Strategy 21. GameStop 17. Mercado Libre is up 18. To the downside, it is uh, Chart Industries off 26 bucks. 14 percent. SBB. Financial 24 bucks. Google's off 23. O'Reilly Automotive down 18 bucks. And the OIH, the Banek Oil Services ETF, off 4%, down 11.87. So where do we begin? I'll tell you where we begin. Um, let's go over to this set of charts. Give me just a moment here. Get things uh, set up. I guess I should have had them set up earlier. We're going to change screens. We're going to go look at the daily equity future contracts out here. And the reason we're gonna, going to do that, you know, we discussed this really on uh, Friday as well, is because that today should form bar number nine of a TD9 count for the ES and the NQ. The Dow equity future contract still retains its TD9 count top. The only thing that would negate that would be a close above 34,792. So you could effectively come, come the days today's close, which would be about, I think it's 5 o'clock for the ES meeting when it's all said and done. Uh, you could have TD9 count tops for the ES, the NQ, and the Dow. We're not going to get any kind of TD9 count pattern inside the Russell 2000. I really don't think we need to. That rectangle formation that you have there is a consolidation pattern. You sell consolidation patterns where price are up towards the top of that consolidation or by the bottom of the consolidation. Price is up towards the top of that consolidation. So we could have, in essence, a sell signal, if you will, on all four equity future contracts out here. Now, it is still possible that tomorrow, well, there's a couple different possibilities. One possibility is that CD9 count doesn't stop anything. That's a possibility. But first, we need tomorrow's session to close. The high can come on the bar following bar number nine. So we really won't know until tomorrow. Well, we won't have a good indication until tomorrow unless we begin to see some support levels 
fail. And we'll go take a look at those momentarily, because if those fail, you know, intraday here, that would be generating some type of signal. But of course, if it failed too much, you could negate the ability to get that TD9 count. Price has to close above bar number five. Now, I actually have the June contract up here. I think that might be different in price than what I had shared with you earlier as I was looking at my verse and my synthetic contract. Yeah. So the close today needs to be above 40. For, no, 4505.75. I think that's what I might have said. If I didn't say that, that's the number to be watching out here today. That's for the ES Mini. For the NQ, the close needs to be above 14654.50 out there. And just simply, you need to see the uh, Dow not close above 34792 in order to be able to maintain, you know, a triple, a. Uh, 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 where you've got three topping signals out here for the equity future contract. Now, let's say these tops, they form, they come in place. What we should expect is price moving back to support levels. Now, support level that I typically see price pull back. We have to respect the profiles that are out there, but typically the target becomes the oscillator and change line, which for the ES is at 4405, the NQ 14167, the Dow uh, equity future contract 34043. Now don't use those to the T. Uh, that's going to give you the range that is out there. The other possibility is we get, uh, we get the TD9 count completed by tomorrow. And then the following day, uh, Wednesday, price takes out those highs. If that is what unfolds out here, then that would tell us about a strong momentum move to the upside. So you're saying, oh, geez, that's really great, Steve-O. You just gave, you, you're, you, there's no conviction here. Well, yeah, I've got conviction with regard to the patterns that are are forming out here. The question becomes, how do we know if there's going to be some type of failure here? The easiest way to do that, and if you give me a moment here, I've got to do a hocus pocus, dominocus. That means I need to change screens, do it efficiently. There we go. And what we really want to be keeping our eyes on is the 30 minute time frame chart for the ES Mini. At least that's one of the things we want to keep our eye on. And the reason is, when we take a look at coming off of the lows for the ES Mini, and the recent lows I'm referring to are in the early part of March, March 15th. I believe was when we saw that uh, bottom out here. Uh, yeah, March 15th. What we have seen is that uh, two times prices pulled back, and the pullbacks have been deep enough where people might have thought, that's it, sayonara, hasta la vista. But that wasn't the case. It was about a matter of knowing where the buy the dipsters are located. And the buy the dipsters, in this case here, are located in a 30-minute time frame chart at their breakout level. So the first one was at 44.26. The second one that was tested was at 44.16. So that leaves right now the TD9 count that we have in place for the 30-minute time frame. Price would have to close below 44.51.75, which is a pretty good move. We're at 45.24 out there. But if we did see it close below that, then what we know is the pattern that's in place here, that that has vanished and it could be the signal of a change in trend so not until we get some type of key levels of support failing for the es mini i guess that takes us back to this set of charts out here we can look at other profile areas as well what is this here why does that give me a different figure 4505 is that a different figure it is i'm gonna have to go figure out what uh what didn't take place on that other chart of mine but and this is a 30 minute chart. So the key level to be watching here, unless I get back to you with something else, or no, is 4504.50. 4504.50. I've got to go figure out what uh, went wrong on my other chart out there. But the number we're going to stick with right now, until proven otherwise, is 4504.50. Price closes below that. We likely have a change in trend signal. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's go to our first question out here. First question coming in from LB. And LB says, hey, Steve, just uh, checking back in on URA. Uh, that's the, uh, what you're looking at up on your screen right now. That is the uh, that is the uranium ETF out there. Uh, just checking back with you. I had talked to you last week thinking this was breaking out to the upside. Well, we got the reversal candle. And uh, we're now testing the uh, downside. Can you please take a look and uh, give me your thoughts? So, uh, Ali, first of all, I just want to say thank you. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, it's, it's just wonderful that you follow along with the tools that I'm sharing uh, with you. Uh, same inside the Tiger's Den. You know, I, I, I didn't uh, log into Discord until maybe 15, 20 minutes before coming on air. And I saw a uh, conversation going on between Dan and um, Ruby, I believe. And they were talking about the TD9 counts that might be forming inside the, the S&P or the ES Mini out there. And uh, uh, I, I just can't thank each of you enough. Um, uh, for, for doing that. So when we take a look at URA, uh, what we can see out here, and I've just got the daily time frame chart up on our screen, and you can see that it was triggering that Rhodes Mentum indicator signal. The actual reversal candle is the one that's taken place so far today, and that's the gap to the downside. On my chart here, if you can really make out that uh, text language, it says falling window, the same thing. Now, here's the issue, or here's what we need to watch, uh, Lee, and that is that there's a brand new profile that formed today. It uh, looks like on Friday it might have formed inside my Ninja Trader system. Uh, but the key level of support there is the bottom of that daily profile. And I and you don't know where price is going to uh, actually close. We're going to go take a look at the multi time frame charts to see if we can get a decent feel for it. But right now, price is basically sitting on support. Support is 2553. Price is sitting at 2552. So now, if it closes below 2553 by one penny, does that mean, well, 
here's what it means. It means you have to have two consecutive closes below support to give you that confirmation. But price is below the oscillator and change line, below support on the daily profile. That says, well, where does price head back to? Well, there's not a TD9 count bottom or anything out here. Uh, there's uh, and there's no TD9 count to the upside. So now we've got to look for other levels. So for other levels, let's just pull this back in. Let's start looking for other potential areas of support. So the first one that sticks out to me, Lee, that's assuming that price closed below 2553, I believe was the number, 2552, I can't recall, uh, would be the weekly oscillator and change line, which is green. So that'd be 2475. That would be the first target to the downside. Then we look at the 195 minute chart, which has a TD9 count, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top now, and price below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. Odds would favor that price would be targeting the 2427 to 2475 area. If price closed below 2427, then that could be giving us a change in trend signal, but take us to where? Well, then I stay with the a weekly profile for the time being. And if price closed below that oscillator and change line, Lee, then you're looking at a move to 2101 and 1948. Okay, so has uranium uh, gone ahead and give us some type of sell signal from an intraday standpoint? Well, here's what you can use to really get that type of a confirmation. And that is you and I can just look at the Rhodes-Mintum indicator top that formed inside of uranium on a 30-minute basis up at the highs out here. And A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, we don't have a bullish reversal candle, but we really really don't need that at this moment. The reason is because we had a TD9 count bottom form at 11 o'clock this morning. And so long as price remains above 25.26, then um, you could see a further bounce. So what price has done, it's bounced right up into, so you get that bottom signal here, just to kind of take you back to, remember when I was talking about the daily charts for the ES and the NQ and said, look, we get those TD9 count tops, the likely price target becomes the oscillator and change line. Well, now you get to see this work in a shorter term time frame. See, we're agnostic to the symbol you and I are looking at. We're agnostic to the time frame. We have to look at the time frame so that at least I tell you what time frame we're looking at. But with regard to the patterns, they work the same way. And so in this case here, Lee, if price closes below the low of this TD9 count, which now because you have a swing point out there that still held that low, that was at 11.30 this morning. If there's a close below 25.21, odds favor that price is going to make a beeline for the 23.21 level. Now, you got to factor in those other areas. I don't remember what they are off the top of my head that we looked at, but I'm sure you've noted them. But it does look like we may have a uh, change in trend signal here. But the confirmation is going to come from closing below this morning's TD9 count bottom. The reason is because where that TD9 count bottom is forming is where on the daily basis you've got that daily level of support. So, Lee, I hope that I have not confused the, you know, you, you know what out of you, uh, and instead giving you the specific uh, information that you need in order to be able to make whatever trading decision it is that you're trying to make inside of uranium. So I do hope that helps you out, and thanks so much for writing back in and uh, just being respectful and 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 kind to me and, 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 and paying attention and saying, yeah, we've got that reversal candle. Now what does it mean? And, and now because we've got that new profile, that's really helpful, I think, for both you and I, and we put that together with the short-term time frame. So sorry for being so detailed. But actually, I don't really know any other way to uh, do this is to give you the details and let you make the decisions from there. Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from Brent in Martinez, California. Brent says, marvelous Monday it is that. Boy, the weather here is beautiful. I know, Brent, you said you're going to have some good weather in the uh, San Francisco area. So hope that you did. Uh, Brent goes on to say, could you please give me your take on the gold contract for all relevant time frames? Have a great day, great week, and the same to you. So, yeah, we're I believe we're on the white background chart. Yes, we are. So momentarily, we'll have that eight panel chart here for Goldilocks and all the gold is doing at this stage here is just pulling back to continue to test its uh, bullish structured daily profile so I'll simply go ahead and expand this here's we're really stuck between support and resistance and it could not be more clear at least it could not be more clear for Stevo. support is 1920.60 now again we're looking at the body of the candle I mean you can look at the wicks the lower shadows upper shadows those are nothing more than the screaming memes of the time period we're looking at it's really the body of the candle that is the essence of price and so at this stage of the game out here, that was an interesting sound in my ear. Uh, at this stage here, price is traded between support and resistance, Brent. Support at 1920.60. Resistance is that green oscillator and change line. That's 1965.70. If we see gold close above that green oscillator and change line, then that's going to signal move back to the 1990, 2026, maybe back to the 2074 level. 
out there. But right now, we're kind of in a narrow range out here, trading between support and resistance. And that's coming from the daily time frame. Is there anything else that we really can learn from the intraday charts? Well, the 30-minute chart out here this morning uh, formed a TD9 count. We saw a uh, bounce, certainly got up to that oscillator and change line. Once it got above that price, made a B line for the breakdown level. That was at 1940.50. That level held. There was not two consecutive closes above that, Brent. Price is headed back up to 1940.50. If you get two consecutive closes above that on the 30-minute the basis says we continue to move higher now you could get a td9 count that identifies the next top there i don't know you're in bar number five right now you've got to come back to that in about two hours time frame so around 3 30 to look at that the 60 minute time frame for gold had a td9 count bottom it is uh above the top of its bearish structured 60 minute profile that suggests that price wants to move higher out there i don't see anything else here that's of additional help to you or any of our listeners. So as we take a look at uh, light sweet crude, is Brent I'm hearing? Brent, are you on the line? I am, yeah. Oh, I'm just looking at your email here. I did not realize that uh, you had also called in. My apology for that. Uh, how was your weekend, by the way? That was great. How was yours? It was uh, wonderful. We've had just simply the most fabulous uh, weather here for the last uh, three or four days, and today's another one of them. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, looking forward to this evening. Brent, do me a favor here. Uh, hold on through this break, and then we come back, and I want to answer any questions you've got about gold and what we've reviewed or anything else. So uh, appreciate that, and sorry to have just kind of talked over you and not realizing that you were actually on the line. This is Steve Rhodes with Brent Martinez, California. We'll be back in just a few. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go back out to Martinez, California, and uh, and introduce Brent appropriately. Brent, thanks for calling. Much appreciated. And uh, glad that you had a, a good weekend. So I was going through all that gold stuff. I've got that multi-time frame set of charts up on the uh, screen out there. Uh, what, can, uh, what, what questions do you have based on what I've gone through so far? I think you covered that well enough, Steve. I just... Uh you gave the levels. It looks like we're just more or less in a consolidation between that level you gave on the you know downside and on the on the upside. So we either break the upside or the downside to to change yes. that pattern. Um, what I was yeah. hoping to do. I, the, the reason I called, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to, but um, I was going to try to kind of preempt you going through the, the email. I just do it on the phone. But if, oh. if you could take a look at uh, oil as well, that's something I would like to look at. Yeah, and absolutely. I think the gold so you did fine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's do this here. Uh, give me a moment. I don't know if I've got the. Yeah, I do have the oil charts. Perfect. Okay. Wasn't sure that I had those up here. So we're we're taking a look at the May contract for oil out here, and the one thing that we notice at the moment is uh, as I look at the daily time frame, I'll just simply expand this chart out here. Is that price is right now trading below the top of its daily profile, and uh, that's at 108.59. Now it's not as if I have any kind of a topping pattern in play out here, but if price does close below 108.59, Brent. It sets up the possibility of pulling back to the other profile levels in the daily time frame. The center of the profile, which for the most part is pretty much at the center of uh, price out here, that's where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value. So 102.03 would be the next support level on a further move lower. And then below that, we'd be looking at 95.48. And then below that would be 87.60. And that's what the daily time frame chart is showing us. Brent, any questions about the daily chart that we're looking at at the moment? Yeah, this looks like the first day that it's been below, you know, the, the OUL for not not many days, but like yeah, a handful of days, days, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and 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 so the point is, so so thank you for, for even pointing that out. And if we go back and take a look at March 9th and price closed below the top of that profile, it sent price to test the bottom profile. Now it closed below it actually for two consecutive sessions. But, you know, it, it got just simply, it never broke a real key level of support, which would have been the 8760 level. Um, if I look at the intraday charts out, so let's, if we go back to the monthly chart, the monthly chart is very bullish. There's no topping signal out here. It negated a TD9 count pattern several months ago so that's bullish the weekly time frame chart doesn't really have any kind of a topping signal as we speak right now and we mentioned the daily doesn't but price is pulled back into a support level on a 30 minute basis this morning you, you did get a td9 count so very much a uh, light sweet crude gold pretty much doing the same thing right at around the same time and so right now it's trading in between support which is going to be the bottom of that pattern that was at 11 o'clock this morning that's at 104.73 and to the upside resistance zone about 109.55 he had a TD9 count on the 60-minute price ran right into its red oscillator and change line. That's not really a good scene to not be able to take that out after two bars. So price may come back and test the lows of the day. He had a TD9 count on the 120-minute chart. So this is very cool, Brent, because we've got TD9s on the 30, the 60, and the 120. So I think both you and I would make a can draw the conclusion that if we close below today's lows out here, that's going to signal to us that we're headed lower. And then we just go back to that daily time frame and say, okay. Okay, maybe it's a 95.48 to 102.03 level. So the level that we're watching for today would be a close below 104.50. Now, it doesn't have to happen today, folks. It could happen this evening. But if we do get below that, that's what's going to then suggest that we head to lower ground, especially with those TD9 counts on those three different time frame charts. Does that make sense, Brent? It does, very much so. Okay, perfect, perfect. Is there anything else that I can do for you? I think that's it. I appreciate you doing the two for, I know it's not Tuesday, but. I'll take it. It's okay. We'll, 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 we'll do two. You bet. We'll do two for for you any day. So thanks so much for calling, and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. I hope. 
You sure will, Steve. Thank you so much. Have a great day and a great week. I'll you bet. You that was Brent. You bet. That was Brent in Martinez, California, folks. I'd love to hear from you as well, and I, I promise to do my best to um, to be better than I am at picking Mar- March Madness teams out there. Which means to pay attention to when you're on the uh, when you've called in that uh, you know I can immediately go to you. I'll certainly do my best to do that. No other questions that I've got right now. Nothing that has come in uh, by email. I don't believe there's anybody else on the line, and no, no request inside the Tigers. Then now, if there was a request inside the Tigers, and if you would be kind enough to retype that in, that would be a, a wonderful thing for me. Uh, so now what do we want to go look at? First, I've got to figure out, because I'm on the white background charts out here. So what do we want to take a look at uh, next? That's a good question. Now, I'll show you what we're going to look at next. Multiple chart Monday. We're going to go take a look at, I'm going to change screens here. And uh, I'm assuming that, uh, of course, you, you know, if I assume anything, you know what that means. Uh, but uh, I'm assuming that uh, Peter in Park City is uh, listening. And if he was listening or is listening, he'd probably say, hey, steve can we go take a look at New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator line? And, uh, and we will. And we are. So as we take a look at it, that's going to be panel number two. The top portion is where you see a uh, price. And uh, you can see that I've drawn across it a uh, green diagonal going to the upside from lower left to upper right. That's because price has actually been rising at a time period where the advanced decline oscillator is falling. And we can see other instances where we have those patterns out there. And so we pay attention to those patterns. So then the question becomes, how do you make a determination when that signal is giving you a sell signal? Well, that's a great question. And to answer that question, what we do is we go back and we take a look at what's going on inside the New York Stock Exchange itself. And now what I will do is I will pull over the New York Stock Exchange. And as we take a look at it, it all depends upon today's close. All right. Why? Because you could get a TD nine count top, but the only way you're going to get that is to see a rally going into the close. Well, it's 136, a rally from this point forward, or maybe it's friend polar bear starts issue or what have you. But the point is that for the New York Stock Exchange to give you the topping signal that says, OK, prepare for retracement, at least back to the oscillator and change line, price must close above 16,735.48. Again, 16, this is for the New York Stock Exchange, 735.48 is where price needs to close above. Right now, we can see that price is trading below that. But it's really going to be an end-of-day deal. So if we do get that signal out there, adding to our other signals, pretty good chance you should expect or anticipate that the New York Stock Exchange will go ahead and continue to pull back. Now, it may look a little bit different for the indice that you're long or short, whether it's the S&P or the Dow or the semis or whatever it might be, or the transports. Um, but that's what you want to do to put that together with regard to, I'm sure, what Peter's question would be was, hey, how about that divergence inside the New York Stock Exchange? Again, I believe what we need here is a confirmed topping signal for the NYSE to go ahead and uh, I suggest to you and I that that top could be in. Okay, so where do we want to go to next? What's the next piece of information? Next piece of information might be, well, let's do this here. Let me see if I can get back to some of my VIX products uh, because one of the other things to look at is... I think it's right here. Next primary, and it's not this chart, so let me uh, resize that. It must be, where the heck did I put it? Is it this one? Has it got the wrong contract out there? No, I don't think that's it either. My apology, folks. Uh, what I was looking for, I've got a chart that shows us rising bottoms in the spot volatility index, and that's not it. Okay, is this it? Uh, my apology. Uh, yeah, this is it right here. Okay. So just looking at this chart to see if, uh, again, looking for a divergent pattern out here where we have price rising, which in essence, uh, we do have price rising just slightly. Just the one day is not going to make the deal. So we're going we're gonna to skip this, even though I took a little time to try to find it. I just want to see, do we have a rising bottoms pattern in the spot volatility index? with a rising price movement inside the S&P 500. We do, it's just a one day, but that could just be a one hit wonder out there. So just forget everything I said during the last uh, 120 seconds. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, terrific, uh, folks. I just got a uh, email from Peter who said he funny he was going to go ahead and ask me about that. Anyways, that was that New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator out there. So uh, glad that we covered that. Uh, we've got a couple questions that have come in, so let's get to those. The first one coming in from Sat P, and uh, Sat wants to take a look at uh, ticker symbol MNDY, which is what we've got up on the screen. That is a Monday dot com out there, and he also wants to take a look at OKTA and looking for entry levels. So when we take a look at this set of charts out here um, not a ton you know it looks like on the weekly basis what you have out here sat is a buy the d point pattern and uh, what price is doing right now it's trading with inside its weekly profile that range is between 125.59 and 225.89 so that's the range there the daily basis price is just below the bottom of its daily profile so that could suggest to you that you're going to see lower price now this did generate a nice road momentum indicator and TD9 count bottom. So you have to love that. Price broke above, truly broke above. It looked like it was a true breakout above its TD9 count breakdown level, 165.01. But right now, if you're looking for an entry point, the entry point is going to be around 141.24. That's the red oscillator and change line. Oscillator and change line. If price closes below that, then what that could be signaling to you, Sat, is that price could come back to retest the swing points that generate that TD9 count and Roach Mintum indicator bottom. So that's the first thing I'd be looking at. Ideally, as price would pull back to the 141.19 level, what you would see is on a short term time frame, some type of bottom pattern out here. So, and I'm not really referring to the 15 minute chart just yet, per se, but if I look at a 30 minute time frame chart, I don't have that bottom signal. I, I 
I've got the same buy the D point pattern that was confirmed with this bullish and golfing candle, but don't really have anything more than that just yet. But that's not going to get us back to the price that you're looking at. On a 65 minute time frame chart, you have a breakout level at 132.47. So that's uh, still below that red oscillator change on a daily time frame. You've got a TD9 count on the 130. So that could be signaling that we may not get down there. So you've got really competing patterns out here. Which one is more important? Is it more important if you trade below the bottom of a daily profile, which it is, by the way, the bottom is at 153.19? I say as long as price remains below that, I'd still set up as my target for your entry into monday.com as the 141.17 area. And if price closes back above 153.19, then uh, then the bottom would have been signaled from this 130-minute time frame chart out there. So that's what I would look at. What else can we look at that's going to be helpful? On a 65-minute time frame, price hasn't been above that oscillator and change line. So if you did see it close above that, uh, that would be a nice signal. And that's right now printing at 154.88 out there. So that's the first thing set that we've got on Monday. Let's go try to put up OKTA out here. See if I type that in properly. That's good. So we're going to let that populate. While that's populated, I'm going to look at my black background screens and just try to narrate what might be seen out here. So in this case, this is Okta Inc. It's trading below its daily, weekly, and monthly profile. So once these uh, nine or eight panel charts here get rolling, we really need to see some kind of a bottom signal out here. Now, you're getting that bottom signal as we speak today on the daily time frame. The monthly still says price could target 112.50. The weekly says you negated a TD9 count, so that says you might want lower price, and that lower price could take you to 121.50. And you can see that the oscillator and change line on Okta on a weekly basis is your real key level. Now that's all the way up at 164.63. That could be just simply a decent, you know, couple percent uh, counter, 10 percent uh, counter trend move to the upside. But the daily time frame is telling you that this is attempting to form a bottom. It's tried to attempt to form this bottom here before uh, over the last uh, couple of uh, weeks. Uh, nothing of which is really held. Price has gotten up towards resistance levels, the top of the profile areas. But right now, you do have a bottom. The question is on the intraday time frame charts, do we have some kind of signals out here? And that's what we're looking for. The 130 minute chart, yes, TD9 count bottom. 65 minute chart, Roach Mintum indicator bottom. 30 minute chart, Roach Mintum indicator bottom. 30 minute chart says you should see Okta trade all the way up to 153.11 out there. So that's where price is headed to right now. So your question is, uh, you're looking for entry points. I don't know if this bottom is going to hold or not, simply because of what we've seen on the weekly and the monthly. But if you're looking for a bottom signal, you've got it right here, right now, as we take a look at Oak Difference daily time frame, the 130, the 65, and the 30-minute time frame chart, and quite frankly, for the 15-minute time frame chart as well. So what I can share with you is at 1.47 in the afternoon, Okta is going to head higher. Whether it's just a counter trend move or not, that I don't know. I, I wish I had that ability to tell you for sure. Um, but that's why you go ahead and you use proper position sizing, you use your stops, and you just simply let the market do what it's going to do. So thanks for writing in. I hope that helps you out. Let's go to the next question coming in from Rich. Rich says, Bitcoin is breaking above the key levels that you were watching. So Bitcoin must be in BTC. Um, Got to believe we're at least in the... April contract. So let's uh, go out here and take a look what April is uh, doing um, and see if we can get that populated. While that's going on the white background charts, I'm going to take a swig of water because my mouth was dry. Actually, what I'm going to also do is try to get to my other Bitcoin charts out here on my black background charts screen. And uh, let's see. Yeah, it is the April contract. That is the active contract. And uh, so Rich's question goes like this. Uh, your, your, your Bitcoin is breaking above the key levels that you're watching, such as the 200-day exponents moving average. Okay. Is it also breaking above the key levels that I'm watching? Would you consider this breakout as a buy point for a long-term hold? So, no, I, I wouldn't take a, a long-term hold, not as we speak right now. And the reason is, just simply put, because today is bar number nine of a TD9 cone. So what Bitcoin could be doing is forming a top between today and tomorrow. Now, the breakdown level that Bitcoin is approaching here, Rich, is up at the 49,345 level. So you could have a TD9 count top that forms either today or tomorrow. Knowing that to be the case, and you were asking about a momentum move, the momentum move would be if we get that topping signal, I don't know whether that highs today or tomorrow, but then we see it close above that. Then that would be your strong momentum move to the upside, but not until it proves, your, it proves itself to you there. 
Uh, what else can I look at here on Bitcoin that's going to be helpful to us? Well, your intraday charts have got some topping signals. The 130 has a TD9 count. The uh, 65 minute has Rhodes Mintum indicator top. The 30 minute has wave number seven and a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. But no levels of support have broken. In fact, if anything, those tops that I just gave you more are more neutral than they are bearish uh, at this stage here because support levels have held. So I'm not seeing a signal right now that says with certainty that Bitcoin is headed lower. But with regard to today's activity, and you had a nice little gap to the upside out there. Um, uh, we're, getting, we're looking at the April contract. That's the one on the right out here. Uh, it's going to be in bar number nine, and I would never have you buy bar number nine. I'd have you sell bar number nine. But in order to do that, we'd want to see short-term signals that show at least some levels of support, at a minimum, the profile levels uh, failing out there. So I hope that that helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for writing in. And again, that was uh, rich. Uh, and so no other questions. I think we've been through all of the questions inside well, certainly by email. I believe that is the case inside of the Tiger's Den. Nothing there to uh, no request. So uh, what else do we want to uh, look at out here? Great question. What do we want to look at? You know what? Let's uh, see it. Where are the bonds? Well, I'm going to, during this break here, I'm going to go try to figure out if there's anything of significance or importance, unless somebody has sent in a request, which certainly I will go ahead and take a look at. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So this weekend was the uh, Palm Beach uh, yacht uh, show out there, and uh, so we've got a big. The biggest show is the one that's down in Fort Lauderdale, and that was about a month ago or so, a little over a month. And and then this past weekend is the one that's up in uh, uh, Palm Beach. What I love about that, it, when the water's really rough on the ocean, is that everybody will hightail back to. Uh, 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 Fort Lauderdale and Miami uh, through the intercoastal, so I get to watch all these beautiful yachts uh, going uh, back and, and forth out there. There's some some been some real beauties this morning. I wish I could turn my camera around. And you could look out my window uh, uh, when the next uh, big one comes through. Um, I think that uh, Max uh, 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 Leslie Wexler is in town. He's got one of the prettiest yachts you'll ever see. It's almost a hundred meters. Uh, I believe it's a gigantic boat. What I love about uh, what I love about his his yacht is is the name he calls it. And he he's the one that uh, you know in the apparel business and so forth. And uh, 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 the 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 company, the Limited, and his the name of his boat is Limitless out there. And it it's really and well, I, I'm partial to uh, boats that are navy blue. Uh, which is what, which is the, which is the color of, uh, of his boat. But uh, at 100 meters, it's pretty stunning uh, boat. I couldn't find a ton out there for us to take a look at, so I just sidetracked there uh, for you. Uh, but here we've got the ES Mini. And so just confirming again, the number for you to be paying attention to is 4504.50 out there. If we look at it, because if price breaks that, we've got the TD now count in place. That at least will be a signal we're going to pull back to that oscillator and change line. Here is the S&P 500 right now, and we're taking a look at their speed dials out here. These speed dials help us to understand market breadth for the different time frames. So you're going to see in the S&P 500, everything is in the green zone, green or blue zone. It's not in the red zone. So we are not getting any kind of a signal as we speak right now at 1.56 in the afternoon that there's you know any kind of pressure to the downside. Doesn't mean that it can't change. But what I can share with you right now at 1.56 in the afternoon is that all the signals for those four time frames are bullish out there. So, folks, stay tuned. Thanks so much for joining me here on Magnificent Monday. But stay tuned. You've got two more great hours left. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. After that, Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. Have a magical Monday, folks.